Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, Rouse Rising. If you are new here, my name is Katie, and today I'm sharing with you a meals of the week. This is mostly dinners with a lunch or two and some breakfast thrown in there for good measure. If you are looking for meal prep inspiration, if you are looking for meals of the week, ideas, if you need, what are you gonna cook your family this week? I've got you covered. These are simple, delicious meals that you can prepare in advance and stick in your freezer, or you can put them in the fridge and have them for later on in the week. On this week's menu, we've got enchiladas, we've got a pumpkin pasta recipe, we've got a beef chuck roast we're gonna be cooking up, as well as a delicious spaghetti, some breakfast, some sandwiches, oh, so many things. Stay tuned, check it out, and if you like this video at the end, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here, and love holistic homemaking, lifestyle, and parenting, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the Rouse Rising family. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Check it out. All right, welcome back. Let's start off with some twice baked potatoes. If you've ever been to a restaurant, a lot of restaurants, especially where I'm from back east, have these type of potatoes on their menu. And it's basically where you take a baked potato and any leftover baked potatoes that you have, and you take out the middle, it's easy to scoop out with a spoon, and we're gonna mix up some ingredients to restuff the potato and bake it again. There are a variety of things that you can add to this potato mixture. I'm gonna start out with some grated butter just to get it mixed in there really well because these are cold potatoes, and this is cold butter. So I'm just gonna, oops, there goes my handle. I'm gonna mash that in there. I'm also gonna be adding some cheese and I've asked the kids if they want taco meat in theirs, they don't. But I'm gonna put taco meat in mine. A lot of places put bacon in them and chives and the possibilities are endless. This is a great way to use up some leftover food. If you have any shredded pork or shredded chicken, you can add that into your mixture. The possibilities are endless. You can do like a roasted red pepper uh, and some kind of maybe Monterey Jack cheese, just different things. Um, I've done pepperonis, mozzarella, and just a little spoonful of sauce in there and you make little potato pizza bites. So just one way that you can throw some potatoes into your instant pot or some extra potatoes into your oven once a week and you can find a variety of ways to use them. It's inexpensive, it's economical, and I mean you can use nutritional yeast in these and olive oil make them dairy free. I used to do that when I wasn't able to have dairy when uh, my breastfeeding babies just are intolerant to dairy. So I have spent many years on a dairy-free diet. Just showing you my bubbly water kefir. It is erupting out of the bottle. It was very fizzy this round and it's a delicious treat. And then we're gonna check on our potatoes. You can make them a little bit more golden brown than this right here. Uh, they need a few more minutes. While those are finishing up, we are gonna make the pico de gallo. It's basically tomatoes onions, cilantro, lime juice. You can add jalapenos or peppers if you choose, a little bit of salt. Um, you know, this is another thing where anything goes. If you have some avocados, throw those in there. Have a good time with it. Throw some corn in there. So we're just going to use this little Pampered Chef blender and uh, chop everything up in it. If you know somebody that's a Pampered Chef um, dealer or uh, representative, you can link their Pampered Chef down in the comments below. I'm totally down with helping out spread the word for that because I love this little chopper food processor. It works amazing with just a few presses of the top. You can have a salsa or a pico in minutes. It's beautiful and we use this all summer long with garden fresh produce. It makes a delightful addition to every single meal. And we're going to make two batches of this tonight. So once I make this one, I'm going to throw in another batch. I do like to remove my tomato seeds and I throw those in the compost bin. Who knows? Maybe we'll have some volunteers pop up in our compost bin over the summer. Some volunteer tomato plants or maybe next year. Um, but that just, you know, makes it a little less liquidy because we're going to be using this on top of our potatoes. And we're also going to have some tortilla chips maybe if we have any left up in the pantry. We don't buy a lot of chips and we use this pico as an addition to our rice. 
Um, like we'll put it on top of our already steamed rice or we will put it on top of our eggs. But my family is to the size now where we go through all of this. This whole four cup Pyrex will be eaten up tonight with this meal. Whatever's left over, we will have on our eggs in the morning. Okay, so this is going to be a gigantic batch of banana muffins and banana sheet pancake. I am adding everything in the kitchen sink to this batch because I want it to make a huge batch. So I'm adding things like whole hemp seeds, just some extra proteins. I'm adding brown sugar. A whole lot of really, really ripe bananas went into this. A couple of cups of, I used some spelt flour. I also used some whole wheat flour in this. That was a quadruple batch. I'm not sure how, how many times that batch was made, but let me just show you right here. I'm going to add three or four super ripe, like very ripe, could get you drunk ripe bananas to this mixture. And I'm just going to mash those up with my whisk. And to that, I'm going to add a couple of eggs, just two to this batch. I think the last one I added eight. I'm going to do a cup of milk. I'm going to add a little bit more milk. You just have to go by the thickness of your batter. I'm doing a teaspoon or two of vanilla, a little splash, probably a teaspoon of salt. I'm doing four tablespoons of sugar. I'm just dumping it in there from my large mason jar because that's how we roll around here. You can make it as sweet or not sweet as you like. You can use any sugar. You don't have to use the organic white sugar that I am using. Next, I'm just going to sift some of this unifying flour that I got from Azure Standard. We are going to be, well, I melted some butter. Sorry, I skipped that part. I threw some butter in my cast iron skillet, probably four tablespoons worth in there, and got that melted down. And I'm adding that. You always want to add some kind of fat to your pancake mixture. It helps feed the brain. It helps sustain us longer. So always adding fat to all of my food. This is going to be about one and a half to two cups of flour. I'm just making enough uh, pancake batter to go in my 9 by 13 sheet pan. We're doing a little bit of baking soda, a little bit of baking powder. I realized maybe I didn't add enough once it baked, but you know, it's probably a teaspoon of baking powder and maybe uh, a teaspoon of baking soda. I'm adding a little bit more milk. So maybe I added a cup and a half of milk to this batter. But again, you can add, make it as thick as you want and make it more of a bread, or you can make it as thin as you want and make it a pancake batter. It's very, very versatile. To this one, I'm not adding any hemp seeds or anything extra. We're just doing the basic banana pancake recipe. I'm throwing it down on some parchment. That's going to make an easy cleanup. And then we're going to pop this in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how dark you like it. I did 15 minutes, I think, because we were pretty hungry. It probably could have used five more minutes just to brown it a little bit more. But it turned out wonderful. I forgot to film it when it came out. But this is what is left of it. The kids really enjoyed it. These two little pieces are mine. They ate all the rest. I've been failing you guys with my dinners, but this is uh, bone broth rice with uh, let's see, that is taco meat. It is from the cow that we had, uh, we bought half a cow and then vegetables with butter. And we are being very conservative with our butter these days. So everybody got a little square on their veggies. This is delicious. I recently started making sprouts and these are going to be broccoli sprouts. So I started out with two tablespoons of broccoli seeds. You rinse them off and then you put them in the jar and you leave them with a screen on the jar upside down to drain really well in a cool dark area and this is probably day three they started to sprout my little guy wants to be a part of this so I'm showing him what they are but I'm going to keep on rinsing these every day a couple times a day and letting them drain really well and keep sprouting and then we're going to move on to some dinner so I am rinsing my rice I always rinse my rice Okay, so right here I've got uh, three cups of rice and I've got some chicken. This says chicken stock, so this is obviously from, um, I must have boiled a bird and then canned up some broth with that bird stock. So I'm just going to add this to my rice and cook it in there and I'm also going to add some salsa in there because I want this to be kind of like a Spanish rice because I'm making enchiladas tonight. So I'm just going to pour all of this into here like so. 
So I am going to put the salsa in there and I might add one more cup of rice and just make a huge batch of rice because we love rice. Now this is sushi rice, but we use it for everything. And this is salsa that my neighbor gave me and I love using salsa in uh, this type of cooking. This is homemade from her garden. Um, it's just delicious. So we're gonna use that to flavor our rice tonight. And we're gonna get all the extra nutrition from the salsa and the bone broth or the meat broth. Okay, so we've got that going on rice setting. We've turned it off. I also grabbed some pumpkin because I was like, this sausage is so incredibly spicy in this. Um, I was gonna mix it with this and then I'm also gonna be adding some lentils to stretch it because what I wanna do is make two trays of enchiladas tonight. So I'm gonna try to add as much stuff in there as I can to stretch it out as much as we can to get two meals so I can throw one in the freezer and we can eat that at a later date. But right now, this is what we're gonna do. I'm just, I'm a little bit concerned that that's gonna be too spicy. So I might have it and save the other half or cook the other half for my husband. One of the things I like to try to do is cook up a whole bunch of meat at once and then use it for multiple different meals. I thought initially that I was gonna make two trays of enchiladas, but as I move throughout this meal prep, I decide I'm gonna be making the pumpkin pasta from Becky at, over there at Acre Homestead. I watched that video earlier on this day and I was totally inspired to make it and I had all of the ingredients to make it. So we're gonna be doing that and I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but let's start browning up this meat. We've got half a pound of the really spicy deer sausage, one pound of grass-fed beef. We're also gonna be using these red lentils that I cooked up. We're gonna combine all of those together, but first we're just gonna get this browned off nice and chopped up. I like using my metal spatula to do this. I have one of those plastic pampered chef meat, I don't know, meat breaker uppers, <laughs> but um, I don't like to use that because it is plastic and I just prefer using metal with my cast iron or when I'm cooking, I try to limit the amount of plastic that I use. Um, just trying to be mindful of that. So we're going to get all of this blended up and we're going to add uh, some onion powder as well, probably a little bit of garlic powder too. And then we're gonna be adding the lentils and mixing this up, getting everything blended really well. If you're looking for a way to extend your meat meals, you can always add lentils. They are mild in flavor and you can easily mask them in meatloaf or pastas. Half of the mixture I'm gonna use for enchiladas, so I've set that aside. And then this other half I'm gonna be using um, to make a pumpkin pasta recipe that I saw uh, over there on Acre Homestead. She made a pumpkin pasta recipe. I don't have any Parmesan. We normally don't have Parmesan. And so this recipe is going to be with mozzarella and cheddar cheese instead. Um, and then all the other same seasonings that she recommends. And then we're going to add some milk to it and then we're going to add the cheese to it and then we're going to mix it all up with some penne pasta. Okay, this is a delicious creamy sauce. I'm gonna add half a block of cream cheese to this and then I'm gonna start shredding up some cheese. You can use Parmesan or whatever cheese you have on hand. I'm gonna be using a combination of this mild raw cheddar that I ordered from Azure. I'm also gonna be putting some mozzarella in this as well because that's just what I have on hand. So you can use whatever you have. Next, I'm gonna be adding about a tablespoon, I would say, of parsley. And again, I am terrible about measuring things, but this looks like a tablespoon of parsley. It's just how much I think that this dish needs depending on the amount of food that I am cooking. I've just gotten to a point in my cooking where I can eyeball pretty much everything. Unless I'm unfamiliar with something, I can eyeball it. So this pasta sauce is all ready. I'm just gonna let this simmer here and all of the flavors melt together while we cook this penne pasta. This is the cheese that I used and the penne is gonna cook up and then we're gonna add it to this sauce. Once we add it to the sauce, we're gonna cover it with breadcrumbs, some more cheese, and then we're gonna bake at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes just to get everything all nice and crusty and melted together. It's gonna to be so delicious. I'm late to the game on oil sprays, but this is probably one of my first cans of oil spray. So I'm 
dumping it into my big cast iron skillet first to get it all mixed up. I want to get all that pasta sauce down into the tubes of the penne. And that is how you get the most flavor in every single bite. That is why penne has holes in it so that it can hold the sauce, whatever sauce it is that, that you are adding to it. Like I said a few minutes ago, all of this is going to go into a casserole dish. I am using this large pie dish because this was before I went to Goodwill and got all of those wonderful Pyrex dishes for casseroles. This was the night that I realized I needed more casserole dishes. So I am using up a lot of my pantry supplies, and this is some breadcrumbs that I had. I have enough bread ends to make my own breadcrumbs, but I'm just going to use this up because it's what I have. I'm topping this with the mozzarella cheese that I've finely grated, and then this is going to go into the oven 20 minutes at 350 degrees. It's going to be delicious. I can't wait to show you. Now that my rice is done, I can show you. I'm just going to mix it up. I'm going to add some of this to that meat mixture, and all of it is going to go into my enchiladas. So yes, I'm just mixing it all up. We're going to start our enchiladas by pouring some of the green chili sauce in the bottom of our pan. I forgot to spray this pan with nonstick oil, but it's okay because I just soaked it in water and it cleaned up really easily. I am rolling up the mixture into these tortillas and you can use any kind of mixture that you have. You could use chicken or ground meat. You could use shredded pork or shredded beef. The possibilities for making enchiladas are endless. I know that my father likes to add a can of crushed pineapple. He also likes to do a can of diced up mushrooms in his chicken enchiladas, and they are delicious. I love doing that too when I make those. But every single time I make enchiladas, it's different. And I can honestly say I don't have a consistent recipe. The only thing I consistently use right now are these flour tortillas and the can of green enchilada sauce. And that's simply because uh, I just, every time I cook and people are like, oh, what's your recipe? Oh, whatever you have on hand, just make it work. And if you're keeping in mind your flavors and what it is that you are cooking, a lot of times you're going to make a delicious meal using what you have on hand. So for like the pumpkin pasta uh, acre over there at Acre Homestead, she has a very specific recipe for that pasta. But I made a delicious pumpkin pasta sauce with what I had on hand. And it was still an amazing meal. My family loved it. I think it could replace, easily replace macaroni and cheese because the sauce is just so creamy and delicious. So I've managed to just cram this casserole dish full of enchiladas and I'm going to pay for it because it's going to get really messy in the oven. It is all going to expand and blow up a little bit. You're going to see that it rises just a tad in the oven when it cooks and I got real lucky that it didn't turn out to be a bigger mess than what it could have been. Thankfully, I was smart and I put it on a tray first before putting it into the oven because my other casserole boiled over in the oven. So this one I'm going to be a lot more careful and we're going to make sure that we keep the oven as clean as we can. It, it needs a good clean right now. I clean it probably every four months. It gets a good scrape down and a good deep oven cleaning because we use our oven almost daily. I don't really ever make my own sauce. I always cheat and buy the store-bought but it makes a delicious, delicious enchilada, as you can see, and I almost used all of it. Maybe I'll just put it in the refrigerator in a jar and we'll add it to rice this week. But this is going to go into the freezer, or maybe I'll just put it in the fridge and we'll eat it another night this week when we're busy, which is like every night. And I will have one last thing to do, so I hope that you found this helpful. We've got this in here going as well, and so that is starting to brown up. I managed to make this the very next night because there was nothing left over of the pumpkin pasta. So we threw the enchiladas into the oven the next night. I just had them in the refrigerator and they cooked up beautifully. Look at how delicious this is. We had enough left over to eat for lunch the next two days and make yourself a big batch of enchiladas or two because they will feed your family quite a few meals. This is a delicious way to make this casserole next up. Let's get this going. We're going to start dinner right now. I am going to make a beef chuck roast. What do I have here? A beef chuck roast. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to get it all seasoned up and we are going to throw it in the skillet, brown it up, and then we're going to put it in our instant pot and let it slow cook all day. I'm still debating. I'm like, do I do it in the instant pot? Do I do it in the slow cooker? I'm probably going to want to use the instant pot for something else. 
I have another Instant Pot insert. So if I need to, if I need to clean out that insert because it has rice in it currently, then I will do that. But we are just going to roast this chuck. Let's get this party going. This is my real salt from Redmond's that I'm using. It ran out, so I needed to restock. We're searing it. I don't think my pan was hot enough. A lot of people think that roasts are really complicated and they really aren't complicated. It's one of the most simple, delicious meals that you can make if you slow cook it all day long. It's going to fall apart and be tender and delicious. So what you want to do to add the most amount of flavor is sear off your meat in a pan. This is going to add some brownness and some flavor to your roast. It's going to make it absolutely delicious. In the background there, I am roughly chopping up some carrots, being careful to remove the ends. And then we are going to just start layering everything in the crock pot back there. I've already added water to the crock pot and it is turned on getting nice and warmed up while we sear this meat and while we get our vegetables ready. We're always thinking ahead, how can we get this done quickly? Okay, so I'm gonna put some of these onions and some of these carrots on the bottom of my pot. And I'm gonna put potatoes on top um, in a little bit, but for now, I'm just gonna start out with some of these on the bottom, get some of the bigger chunks of carrots cooking and set the meat on top of that. And then I'm going to deglaze my pan. And when I deglaze the pan, whatever I have, I'm gonna dump into the crock pot. There's no need to be intimidated by cooking with cast iron. It's really quite easy. And anytime that I have stuck on bits to the pan, I just pour some hot water into my hot pan and deglaze it. This uh, is gonna go back into my Instant Pot with my beef to add more flavor. We're also going to be adding some more carrots, obviously. We're going to add in some garlic. And the seasonings that I'm going to use for this roast are what I typically use for all of my roasts, whether it is beef or chicken. I like to use rosemary and thyme, salt and pepper, a little drizzle of olive oil, of course, the onions, the garlic are going to give it a lot of flavor. Some people don't like to use garlic on the, like in their meat dishes, um, especially their roasts. But look at how beautiful this is. This is going to sit here on my countertop with the lid on. And back to my sprouts. This is about day five, I would say. And I'm going to give them another good rinse and give them one more day because I still see some seed pieces in there. But I think they're all sprouted. And then this is this delicious roast after it's been cooking for a little while. I added the potatoes on top because they cook really fast. This is about the last hour to two hours of this cooking process. And this is the meat. I started pulling it apart before I started showing you guys what it looks like. We got down in here a little bit of broth. Um, but this is the pork chuck roast. There's a nice good bone in there. We'll probably let that simmer down with some other bones that I have and make a nice yummy broth but in the meantime i'm gonna serve up these kids we've got carrots down in the bottom and onions down in the bottom so we're gonna serve this up i'm gonna chop up some meat it's actually falling apart pretty good so i'm just gonna shred it up throw it in their bowls and boom dinner that was easy wasn't it you can do it too super easy and just it, everything's simple around here simple seasonings rosemary thyme salt pepper um water meat potatoes carrots onions boom a little bit of garlic. I thought I would share with you all what we do for breakfast on a lot of our mornings. And this is um, oatmeal with raisins and coconut and cinnamon. What else we put in here? A splash of milk, water. Sometimes we add whole hemp seeds. Sometimes we add other things on top, chopped dates. Ooh, what? Are you hungry? Goji berries right here. We've got our coconut and this. Okay, I'm getting it. This is gonna, um, this is like crispy shredded coconut and I'll link it down below. Um, but this is gonna go on top. And then we also have some cranberries, some apple juice sweetened cranberries that we would like to put on our oatmeal. Um, but since we're, today we're actually using raisins. And where's my raisin jar? Yeah, today we're using these raisins. 
in the oatmeal and uh, we're gonna serve this up. These are the old fashioned oats that I did and you guys saw I just did a pantry restock and we're already almost all the way through this. So this is what it is. This has got the raisins. I sprinkled coconut on top, a little drizzle of maple syrup. Um, we also put maple syrup in the main oatmeal and mixed it all up. And then I always do a little bit more on top with the butter to get that fat in there. It melts in. It's so good. A little bit of creamy with the milk. Um, if you've been on my channel or been here for a long time, you know that when I have new babies and I'm breastfeeding for the first year, I am completely dairy free. So my baby is now what, 14 months old and he tolerates milk in my breast milk. It means he no longer spits up. He's no longer puking after he nurses. He's no longer colicky. He doesn't have any reflux. So he's able to tolerate dairy to the point that guess what? Now he's eating it too. He's eating the same stuff. So he's able to tolerate it fine now. But um, my babies, it's usually 12 to 18 months, sometimes 24 months with my really sensitive ones before they're able to tolerate dairy without spitting up. So it's always caused them reflux. And with Bodhi, I eliminated dairy way before, a couple weeks before he was born so that I wouldn't have a newborn that was throwing a fit. But look at him. He's feeding himself so good with his spoon. Like I said, he's just, uh, he was born in March, so he just turned one years old, and we are in May now. Yeah, you just had your 14-month birth anniversary. <laughs> Can you show us how you eat? Or are you going to do it left-handed? Good. You're doing so good feeding yourself. Yeah, see, you took your bib off. I had a napkin tucked in his shirt, and he took it off and yeah. threw it on yes. the floor. So, see, that's what we got going on this morning. Hi. Hi, Papa. Bye, Papa. Hey, I got a million things going on right now. Just got the baby down for a nap. Aaron got home from work. The kids are outside. He worked half a day today, but um, these are homemade bread, uh, homegrown sprouts, avocado, mozzarella, mayonnaise, sandwiches, and I just cut them up really small. Um, these are the sprouts that I've been growing and using them on sandwiches and they're just delicious. And then I'm having some leftover enchiladas. Threw some avocado on top with the rice that we made with, um, what do you call that, salsa. The delicious salsa from the neighbor. Little shriacha, little sprouts on the side. I'm gonna throw maybe some sauerkraut on this. Um, it's gonna be delicious. This is dinner tonight. It is spaghetti, but I used pizza sauce from Walmart and I added to it onions, spicy deer sausage, and shredded up, finely shredded zucchini that you can see in there. Um, so that made our very simple bolognese sauce and then we had some thin wheat noodles with that that was dinner it turned out really delicious the kids are gobbling it up it's a little bit spicy but nobody seems to mind and i'm gonna eat mine and feed the baby thank you so much for joining me this week and checking out all the meals that i made my family if you've made it this far give this video a thumbs up that is a like and let me know what you think down in the comments below Thank you so much for joining me today. Click that subscribe button. Until next time, bye.